It's a package from China or an end product. Yeah, you know, it's China time. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, I want to take a close look at the Pandora 7S game console. Yeah, they are calling everything Pandora boxes nowadays. But what we're going to get is this very nice casing. And it looks quite nice. A little bit flimsy on some sides. But yeah, for the money, we can't complain because these products are not very expensive. So inside the packaging itself, we are going to find the game system. And I was so curious what are we going to find. So I just picked it up just to show you here on the channel what you're going to get. And let's see how naughty this thing is. Inside the package itself, we're going to get two knockoff controllers, PlayStation 2 of course. Well, I'm very curious how good the quality is, but they are not comparable with the original controllers from the Sony back in the day. Of course, we're going to get the red nice looking console and this, this transparent casing and the power supply. So over here, we're going to get an USB 2.0, yeah, seriously, in card reader with 2.0. Okay, we're having here the HDMI cable, just a basic HDMI cable from the brand Hat called Doomy Box, never heard of it. We're going to get a micro USB to USB converter, and we're having here the USB to a jack and barrel jack. And I'm guessing the reason why, if you want to power it on, because this thing uses a barrel jack for powering on. And if the original power supply gets broken, you can always use a normal, you know, let's say, phone charger for giving some juice because the system itself is 5 volt. Okay, so the controller itself, I'm very curious how this thing will feel. But first, the most important thing this smelly test. Oh. They smell actually pretty good. So the joystick, I don't know what it is more and more. It feels a little bit slippy. I don't know what it is. Oh, I must say they are, they are not bad at all. Oh man, these, these buttons, listen to it. Oh, 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 oh. The rubber is like the start and of course the analog. The cable length is around, I think 1.5 meters. Yeah, with a basic USB connection. Then we're having the power supply. I'm still going to get myself an adapter, but the power supply looks very nice, decent, weighs quite heavy. This is a 4 amp, 5 volt, so this thing is not, let's say, comparable with the cheap knockoffs. We're going to get the on and off switch over here, so we're having an on and off switch is also a very new thing, because with the previous models, we didn't even get it. So the system itself, this is what we're calling the Pandora Box 7S, 7S, whatever. It's just bullshit, people. It's just bullshit because it's just an Orange Pie based system. But let's take a close look at the casing. Okay, so over here we're having the HDMI connection, then we're having the input for the power supply, and here we're having the audio jack. Okay, so on this side we're having three USB connections and the Ethernet, and here we're having a micro USB, and then we're having the SD card slot, or the CF card. I need to say it correctly. So what I did understand that the orange pie systems are most of the time getting really hot. So an active cooling is something that you're really going to need. And with this transparent casing, they have given us a very small fan. And I can already tell you, this thing is not very loud, so it is very positive. But I'm pleased to see that we're having a cooling passive element on the mainboard itself. Combined with active fan cooling, yeah, I can say that that is a very good combination for keeping this thing very cool. But when you take a close look at the casing and how it's made, it's made very easily. Yeah, I like the shell itself, how it looks, but you can pick it up from AliExpress for a couple of dollars, as you can see over here. It's only held by four screws and the same goes with the bottom part. Okay, so on the bottom, we can see it now, but the here under, we're having an A3 all-winner quad-core CPU. But okay, let's talk about more specifications. We're going to call this the ETA Prime moment. Alright, so let's go over the most interesting specs in my opinion. The CPU is an H3 quad-core Gore-Tex A7 that is running on 1.6 GHz. The CPU is a Mali 400 MP2 GPU that runs on 600 MHz. It has 1 GB or memory and this is DDR3 that is shared with the GPU. On board we also have an 8 GB eMMC flash. Then of course we have a connectivity like Ethernet. And so far I know it also has a possibility for a Wi-Fi antenna, but it's of course not with this version. Alright, so it's time to boot up the Orange Pi. And I'm going to tell you already, with the Retro Orange Pi, it's a great piece of software. But with the combination of the hardware, we're going to see some limitations compared with the Pi 4. 
And surprise, surprise, it's basically the same stuff what you're going to get when you're building this device yourself, like with the Raspberry Pi number four nowadays. So it has support like iBit, 16-bit stuff, Nintendo 64, MAME, Neo Geo, the Pocket Systems, PC Engine and PlayStation Portable PlayStation. But still with these Orange Pi devices, but I did know that it has less power than the Raspberry Pi 4. So the question remains, what can we play with it? So that's what we're going to try out. And there was another thing that is quite interesting when you're pressing start, you can go back to the desktop mode. And with the desktop mode, let's open it up. So fun fact, so <laughs> where are we going to connect? Um, mouse and keyboard we can just use this thing like a desktop computer system okay so i did notice there were some things on the desktop itself so here we're having this file called donate when opening up it doesn't do anything Kodi can be activated also from here wi-fi configuration so if you need to configure wi-fi you can do it very easily over here okay so let's boot up emulation station and let's see what we're going to get with the emulation power because i'm very curious nowadays we can build these things yourself way cheaper or is it just a pretty good deal? Let's find out. So they're calling it the Gamebox 7S plus 128G. Yeah, right. Or it just just an orange pie. Let's go! Time to go predator mode! So you can hear with this game it struggles big time. Okay, so let's try another game and let's see if this is going to be any better. But you can hear that not only the soundtracks are very horrible, the game itself is just struggling with this. Nevertheless, emulation on this device is not that great. And it's not even running PlayStation 1 perfectly. But PSP is the same story. This game seems to be running good enough. I did see a lot of glitching, especially when you're going to do turbo or the nitro mode, you can see a lot of glitching out on the display. Nevertheless, it's not perfect, but this game is playable. Hey guys, so this is what you're going to get with this Pandora 7S. It's just an orange pie inside a fancy case. Well, it works, it gets quite hot after playing for some time. The way you can check the emulation itself, it's pretty damn horrible. I did notice a lot of choppy gameplay, N64, PlayStation 1 with Bloody War 2. Uh, yeah, that is something that you don't want to have. So yeah, you can write a belt to yourself, one with a Raspberry Pi, in my opinion. That you have way better performance for the same amount of money. But I thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell, become a wicked family, and I will see you in the next video.